Hi, this is Paul Sackett's Good News Planet. I'm speaking with Paula Zahn. Hi, Paula. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Okay, good. Actually, the last time we met, it was at the Emmys Awards with uh, uh, our good mutual friend from Channel 13, David Horn. And you're doing a beautiful show over there at Channel at the Public Television, right? Yep, Channel 13. Right. And I have the most schizophrenic uh, life in television these <laughs> days, doing a art show where I get to explore the the... The beauty of humanity, and then this uh, crime show for Discovery ID. Well, Extremes of human behavior. It's interesting. There seems to always sometimes be crime between uh, behind art shows, too. That seems to be an intrigue as well. People looking and figuring out ways to uh, with art. I don't know. You. Uh, this is quite an interesting lifestyle. Uh, and this show, your investigation discoveries, is that properly exactly. said? Exactly. So I it's often go from Carnegie Hall to a maximum security prison, someplace how, in the middle of nowhere. How, how do you do that? Seriously, in, in a serious way, because you know, I'm looking at some of the kinds of shows and some of the kind of people you're 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 interviewing so i will have to put you under a very gutsy person uh well, because those are you know unfortunately those are people that have uh, some concerns about their their difficult situations of life aren't they yeah i mean these stories are, are fascinating and i i guess you know you 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 find uh, sometimes in, from looking from the outside in you, you you can't make accurate judgments of who people are i've interviewed highly respected scientists who've uh, snapped and done ended up in you know prison for for murder um the last person you would ever expect you know to ever be involved with with a murder um it's interesting to me from a psychological point of view when when you sit down with some of these people who are currently sitting in in jail you know what motivated what went wrong in their lives not that i'm looking for excuses for them to murder people but there have been a, a couple of uh, stories that I've covered where kids were repeating a cycle of violence that they were exposed to as kids. Um, you, you always want to know, at least I do, why? how could another human being do that to someone? And um, you'll see in this season I do some hard-hitting interviews in prison and ask some pretty tough questions of people, uh, many of whom are going to be sitting in prison for the rest of their lives. And then there are also prisoners I've interviewed whose convictions have been vacated, um, who spent uh, decades in jail for crimes they didn't commit. Um, and that's another kind of exploration that's also been in very interesting. Well, let's talk about that latter one. Uh, so uh, did, did that uh, and that conversation, how, how does that kind of conversation go? Are they well, angry? You know, it's really interesting. Um, I've covered four wrongful convictions in the last seven months. And um, the they're all men, and and the men are surprisingly free of any bitterness. And um, I'm always amazed as they talk about egregious errors that were made by the prosecution, uh, witnesses that were paid to testify against them, uh, witnesses who recanted their testimony because they were facing you know drug drug. Uh, imprisonment but in exchange for cutting a deal they would testify against the guy and they wouldn't have to go to prison for their drug sales you know all you hear about these things all the time and even with the preponderance of those horrible things happening and they said hey look you know i'm not going to spend another minute of my life being negative and in three of these gentlemen now are going around the country speaking for the Innocence Project, which is a, a group from Northwestern University that takes a look at cases um, where new DNA evidence has surfaced, where the cases uh, should be reopened. Um, but I, I, I wonder, you know, how big any of us would be if you're sitting in solitary confinement year after year for a crime you didn't commit, how you would treat the people who um, lied, you know, once you got out, and, and they all want to just move on and make up for lost time, and um, that that always has uh, surprised me. Well, I would imagine a lot of people would, and they're like motivational speakers of some sort, right? Right. And, uh, uh, and I agree with you. I mean, how would somebody... Wh what would you say from now the people who, you know, were guilty from so far that uh, that you've spoken with, that uh, was there something that they did... So let's say to so our whole audience... 
you know, as you say, a, a surgeon could become a murderer. A, anybody could become a murderer. That's an unfortunate comment here. Sure, uh, but, sure. Uh, was there anything you would say to them that you've learned that could keep them from be doing that? Well, I guess that, um, you know, sometimes it's, it, it's an issue of depression um, combined with this economy that, that it's just killing the souls of so many people as they're struggling to support their family. So it's economic pressure, and I guess it would be that, that people really should seek help and find people they can talk to. Um, some people, um, you know, once again, I don't want people to think I'm looking for excuses for these people who have murdered. Um, there are some cases, once again, where you've seen a pattern of violence passed on from one generation to the next, and, you know, there was no safety net in place, uh, or there was some, you know, outrageous uh, ball that was dropped by law enforcement. But coming back to individuals, I guess it would be that, you know, any of us is capable of snapping when you're facing financial pressure, when you're facing betrayal, abandonment, sickness. Um, there are a whole host of external things that can happen to us that, that make people um, sometimes uh, not be able to maintain control. Well, I'd love to continue on our conversation because I'd love to know how you got into this uh, opportunity and uh, where your your good soul comes from to be able to share these kind of information but you have a live interview and so uh <laughs> right now so okay. i'm gonna get it off and let you go do that and thanks Paula, Paul. i'll get well, back always to you good to talk it's to you good and i'm glad with to, you. Uh, I'm, i i i now have met you in person there we go okay paul take, take care. care my friend bye-bye bye-bye